Hey guys, welcome to part six video on how to deploy Azure Data Platform end-to-end -end with DevOps Pipeline. This part is about deploying Azure Data Factory pipelines, data sets, link services, etc. incrementally with DevOps Pipeline. Essentially, we're going to deploy data factory codes, including pipelines, data set, and also a link service into test environment using DevOps CICD pipeline. If you haven't watched my previous videos, please make sure you watch uh, part one, two, and four. And if you have, you should be able to follow along in this part six video. All right, let's get to the demo. Let's dive into the demo. This is my Azure portal. You've seen all these resource groups that's been deployed in the previous video. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open my data factory in my development resource group here. So that's my data factory, learn DevOps dev DF. And if I open it, this is what gets me. I've, I've skipped some of the steps here because I've already created some dummy pipeline and data sets. Uh, please do it at your own pace. Uh, if you want to uh, follow along on this, because I want to have something to deploy into another environment. Also, make sure you've got your Git configuration setup. Uh, what you want to do is you go to manage, go to Git configuration, make sure you have this setup. If you want to know how to do this uh, in more detail, I've got a video talking about it. So just check out this card uh, on the top right corner. I've also got a dummy link service here, just on to a data lake storage connectivity. And yeah, just as an illustration here, I want to deploy this data link service, the data set and the pipeline into test data factory, which is in another environment. And currently it's all blank. Yeah. All right, I'm in my Azure DevOps repo dial. What you want to see is you go to platform and you want to see your data factory folder populated with all the data factory data sets, factory, and all those details uh, really in here. Now, this will be populated immediately if you set up your Git repository in data factory correctly. And I happen to have my root folder under platform folder data factory. If you want to follow along, make sure you set the root folder in the same way. The other thing that you want to create is this package.json file. And you want to put this file in the root of the repository. And you can actually find this file in Microsoft documentation on how to automate CICD deployment for Data Factory. But if you actually download these codes from my GitHub, you don't need to do that. You can just use this. Okay. Now let's go to the pipelines and create a new pipeline from DevOps repo. And I go to my repo here, existing is your pipeline YAML. And I'm going to select part six, get back to YAML. I will explain the steps in a sec. All right. So first two here at the top, they're kind of the same. Um, I'm going to take these variable groups here as my variable uh, source for my variables. For the first couple of steps here, just bear that in mind uh, that the first two step here, this is the prerequisites, uh, which is essentially installing Node.js and NPM package. The next one here is to validate and build ADF ARM templates. Effectively, this is like clicking that publish button in ADF. And I set this to uh, point to the repository, uh, data factory folder. And this is the details of the data factory in development environment. This is the source of your data factory uh, resource. So I can see, you see here, this is parameterized by uh, the subscription, but the rest I do uh, intentionally 
hard code these details because I want to make sure it's coming from the dev to the factory. And the last one is just uh, uh, like a folder name that I will that I that will be used by the DevOps pipeline to package the files. Next one is to stop the ADF triggers. So if you have ADF trigger uh, for the deployment, make sure it has to be stopped first. Otherwise, the deployment will fail. The script and the arguments here, this is, again, this is coming, actually coming from the data factory ARM template folder here. So the, the, the build task in the previous step will actually produce a number of files, including this pre and post deployment script. And you will also need these details here, uh, which will take you, which you will let the data factory, so the DevOps pipeline to find out which is the targeted uh, data factory resource. And in this case, we are looking at the test data factory resource. The next bit here is the, the main bit, the main deployment bit. So this is the part where we're gonna do ARM template deployment using the service connection DevOps for that subscription ID, for that resource group location, and looking at the ARM template for factory.json that was built in the in this step, step three. And then the parameter file is actually coming from yeah these ARM template parameters for factory, okay. And if you do and you do normally parameterize the values of the parameters, um, which is the parameters in this JSON file. And at this at this in this example, I just need to parameterize the factory name and the data lake link service URL. Okay, so this is parameterized according to the environment. If you want to know exactly, and you do need to make sure that if you're overriding parameters, check out the uh, your repository. Uh, and when you're on your repository, the best way to find out what parameters that you want to override is you go to the ADF publish, you open the ARM template parameters for factory. Okay. And in this, in this instance, uh, I happen to need to override these two parameters. If you have more parameters, which you tend to have, you need to make sure you override that in here. Okay. And lastly, you want to start the ADF triggers that you stop in step number four. Okay, uh, from here, I'm just going to save. Once you save this pipeline, I'm going to edit as usual. I'm going to rename this pipeline by going to there. And I just name it part six data factory. And if I go to variables, I want to make sure I link all my relevant data factory, which is um, common and also test. We don't need dev because we are deploying from dev to test and we just need to parameterize according to test environment. So if I just click save, now that is pretty much ready. If I click all here. What I want now is just click run. And if there's no other stages, just one stage to run. If I click run, if I refresh this, it will request for a permission. And I will permit that. And now let's just wait for this pipeline to run in the next couple of seconds. After about two minutes, we can see that the data factory deployment is now successful. So we have successfully incrementally updated the data factory pipeline in now in test environment. So we go to my test 
data factory here if I just click refresh now the pipeline and the data set and also the link service has been populated here and just bear in mind here that if you click that one since I've parameterize the, the, the values in the DevOps pipeline. You can see that it's the URL is now pointing to TSD data lake instead of the dev. And this proves that the data pipeline uh, deployment has been successful. That was the end of part six video on deploying data factory codes incrementally into test environment. Stay tuned for part seven now to deploy Databricks and Data Lake files into test environment as well. Like and subscribe if you enjoy and find my videos useful. Until then, see you next time.